to another how to plus q a event my name is anna mari Thorpe, and i'm your host so not just today but every day <laughs> so welcome welcome um Atamarie, everyone. This is the start of the Te Reo Māori Week, and we want to say good morning, Atamarie, to everyone out there, and those of you in Tamaki Makaurau, Kia Kaha, stay strong. Um, we're sending you lots of love, aroha nui to you. So today we're going to be talking about turn your customers into raving reviews with Leticia from Yonder. And this is an important aspect of business because it's almost like free marketing for you when people are recommending you. We all know that saying where it's like um, one person will tell 10 friends, you know, and that is exponential online. So this is going to be some valuable information and we know you're going to have questions. So if you want to get your questions answered, the best way for you to do that is to use the chat function or the Q&A function if you're here with us on Zoom. Now, some of you stream with us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube. You can use any of those platforms to join us for these 10 a.m. sessions. So book us in with your morning tea if you want to be live or you can watch them at your leisure um, on any of those platforms as well. So I'll be checking the comment sections and the chat functions on all of the platforms throughout the session. And Letitia said that she's happy to take questions throughout. So if you've got a question, drop it in because you never know. Somebody might be a bit too shy to pop their question in and you're doing them a favor. So that's about it from me. Letitia, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, it's my pleasure. And we were just chatting before how there's a business around the neighborhood, um, well, in the neighborhood that's using Yonder. And I know that we're going to talk about like some of the different aspects of reviews, but it's just always fun when you're like, oh, I know that person through this person and this person. And um, we love that. And that is exactly what recommendations are, right? Reviews. It's like that personal conversation that you can have with people. So how do you then digitize that and make it available in that digital world at the moment? Mm. Yeah, I'm really, I think this is such a valuable um, session for folks. And so I'm not going to waffle on as I tend to do. I'm going to drop off here. I'm going to let you drive. I'm going to make sure that everything's running in the back. Now I'll keep my mic on just to let you know that your share screen's working if you're ready for that. And, yep. um, and then I'll kind of drop back in when there's some questions. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, and don't be afraid to ask me questions. Um, I love answering them as we go. Make it as interactive as possible. So kia ora um, and welcome. Um, thanks for having me, Anna Mara. And um, yeah, welcome to, the, to this turning your customers into raving reviews. Um, so today I am going to cover when I can get my screen to present. Hang on, I'm just going to... Oh, yep, there we go. Um, today, I'm going to cover some key points that I want you guys to understand and walk away with today. And it's the first one is why even bother about reviews? So um, Anna Murray just touched on it. And what we're going to look at today is looking at human behavior and how this works in the digital era. And I also want to cover why reviews are so important for your business success looking forward. They are just so essential to any business these days. Um, the second thing that I was going to, going to cover for you guys is um, ways to uh, dive into how you're going to get more reviews and give you some do's and don'ts when collecting them. We see lots of people and we get asked this a lot is how do I do it? How do I do it well? How do I get more? And then um, third of all, we're going to um, go into explore the ways that you can use your reviews to actually help your business to grow and improve your marketing and sales. So it's all right just having your reviews sitting there, but actually, how do you use them to grow your business? And so I'm going to give you some ways and tips that you can actually do that. So um, before diving in, I just wanted to... Um, introduce myself so that you know a little bit about me and why I'm talking about this tough subject today. So my name's Letitia, I live in Taranaki, New Zealand, and pre-COVID I already worked um, at from home, so I've got very used to doing um, Zoom calls and I was used to them beforehand, which is pretty lucky for me actually. Um, I'm one of the founders and owners of a software business called Yonder HQ. So at Yonder my role involves sales, 
as well as in being involved in some marketing and customer success management. So I'll touch on today, um, uh, I'll touch today and what I've found in my role is that sales and marketing, there is quite a bit of crossover, especially in the review section. So um, again, it just reinforces how important reviews are for that. So that's enough about me. I talk really fast, guys. So um, if you want me to slow down, just, just let Anamari know, because I'm just going to dive straight into it. Um, so if you're wondering what Yanda does, I'm just going to give you a very quick overview of what it is we do. So we like to think of ourselves as a 24-7 customer experience manager. So our mission is to support businesses to grow by delivering better customer experiences by listening to the voice of the customer. So to achieve this mission, Yonder provides survey and review request software to businesses, which help them to gather and listen to customer feedback and reviews. So Yonda makes sending and receiving feedback and reviews super easy for a business. And we also analyze it for businesses, which saves them hours of staff time. So we've had lots of businesses able to throw away their Excel spreadsheets uh, where they used to input all their reviews and feedback and have to analyze it themselves. Um, so with our system, they're able to, it's all done in the dash in, back end dashboard for them so they don't have to do it. And we, we cover a range of industries. So um, the main industries that Yonder works with is um, tourism. So we do accommodation, activity providers, attractions. We do professional services. So Anna Mari just touched on the hairdressing service that she's just about to go and visit locally. Uh, we do hairdressing, beauty salons, beauticians. Um, we do professional services, so lawyers, accountants. You guys might be all laughing about this stage saying, why do they all need reviews? But in actual fact, they're some of the ones that people um, re or that really need to boost their number of reviews and ways that they collect feedback as well. Um, we also work with trades, so like your electricians and your plumbers. Um, and we work with a bunch of marketing agencies who uh, use our software for their clients. So they have tourism, professional services, um, personal services and trades, and then they use um, they then use our software for their customers. So we cover a broad range. As you might have noticed, we don't actually cover um, products, sort of like um, if you're selling, uh, got a store online and you're selling sort of candles and things like that. But everything I say today will be super relevant to what you do as well. It's just that we specialize in the services provider ones. Anyway, enough about me. Let's dive into how you're going to turn your customers into raving reviews. So first of all, I wanted to actually start with a bit of a story um, and play out a little bit of a scenario with you guys. So you're work walking down the street, you and a couple of friends, and you guys are feeling hungry, and you walk past two restaurants. One restaurant is full, like the one on the left here, and the other one is empty, like the one on the right. Which ones... Well, which one do you guys choose or think you want to go and visit? And you don't need to write that answer in. It's just rhetorical. I, I'll answer it for you guys. Because the majority of people will choose the one on the left, the busy one. So I'm going to ask you guys, but why? That just seems crazy, especially if they're in a hurry and they need to be served fast. But the fundamental answer is that people make an unconscious, although sometimes it is conscious, assumption, but we'll, we'll just say that they'd make a decision that the empty restaurant just isn't as good. After all, if they served good food, people would be there, right? So this scenario is an example of real life social proof in action. So I'm going to use that word a lot. And I wanted to really just give you an analogy with the restaurant. So even if the empty restaurant, um, even if the empty restaurant in this example had better food and service, because there was more people sitting in the left-hand side one, people assume that it's a better place to eat and they follow the masses. So what I'm hammering home, and I'm going to do it all the time, is recognising that social proof matters. And it matters today in a digital world more than ever. 
And so how, and so what I'm going to touch on now is how does actual social proof work in a digital age? Because it works all right if you're walking down the street and see a restaurant, but how does that actually play out in the digital age of today? So um, this is just a slide deck for now, but I want you to, I'm going to tell you another story. Um, you're sitting at home with a bunch of friends and you want to go to a nice restaurant for dinner, somewhere different. And you want, you've got quite a few stipulations. So you want good food, you want great atmosphere. So due to the nature of the digital world and how we live, what are you guys going to do without even leaving your house? You're just a bunch of friends sitting around talking about it. You're going to jump on Google or whatever browser you use. You're all going to pull out your phones, sit there and go, okay, let's have a look, see what restaurants nearby and what they say about them. And you might even type into Google some of your search engine, like sort, sort of search sort of optimum words that you're looking for, like great atmosphere, good food. Right. They'll, it'll come up with a list of, of places. Your friends, you might throw it around with your friends. Hey, have you guys been here? Have you guys been there? No one's been anywhere. What do you do next? You guys all stay on your phones and you start, and it, it may not be you particularly, but this is just human behavior at the moment, customer behavior, is that they start looking at reviews. So only once they've done their research on reviews, will they then start to commit and narrow down that search and narrow down the, oh, well, this restaurant has, people say this about it, they say this, let's go with that one. And they book. So that's one example of how they use the, the social proof works in a digital age. I'm going to give you another one now, and it's around hairdressers. So you're not happy with how your hairdresser cuts your hair, for example, and you want to change around. You've asked your friends for a few suggestions, which is what you do. You ask family and friends. But the issue with them is that they all use different businesses. So you've got this lovely list of names, but how do you narrow it down? And how do you know that the business suits you? Maybe times they open, um, where they are located, all that sorts of things. So again, you go online to have a look. When you pull this information up online, it will also show you the reviews for the business that you looked into. Now, I want to say this, if you see a business and you've pulled up some hairdressings, there's a list there and you see one with 50 reviews and one with five reviews, what's your immediate thoughts? Again, I'm going to leave that with you, but the social proof and generally people's behavior is that they follow the masses. And so the one that will get the more clicks to their website and will eventually convert is the one with the more reviews. So they're just two examples. Of, of how, um, yeah, you, the digital age has changed that social proof, but it's still very strong and very there. I also wanted you guys to keep in mind that the internet and social media today is flooded with paid advertising. On the flip side, a review, however, is considered more powerful than an advertisement because reviewers are not seen as financially invested into the purchase. They're considered by most people as independent and usually unbiased, <laughs> although the businesses may argue with that. It's suggested that people treat reviews like personal recommendations from family and friends. So they're becoming just as important as that word of mouth and spreading the word. So you may question the unbiased assumptions by some of the people, and we know that some people just jump on and give people bad reviews and things, but in general, people will follow the masses and do it. I also wanted to point out, and just to be aware, guys, that for search engines like Google, they will actually boost you in your search engine results if you have, along with a bunch of other stuff that they look at. But they, one of the things that they do look at is reviews. And if you have more four and five star reviews, they will boost you in your SEO results. So if you're paying for search engine optimization, which is SEO, then at least do everything you can to organically get as many as you can to help you get to the top of your search results. Um, it's just one way that can super help you. That can help you easily. So I'm just going to jump into another reason why reviews are so important. I'm just going to keep keep showing you why they're so important, but they, they're a super way for you to learn about your customers. And I'm actually going to touch on this at towards the end of um, the session today, where um, we're going to look into 
how you actually use them to improve your business. So don't be scared of reviews because lots of people are. Um, see them as a real opportunity to learn and take that learning to make business improvements. And then if you're not convinced yet <laughs> that reviews are important, I just wanted to give you guys some food for thought. This isn't directly related to reviews, but customer loyalty is a real, um, and reviews are very much linked. So keep in mind that we see lots of people throwing money at marketing to get new customers through their door or to their website, especially to their website in this digital age. However, what I want you guys to think is that out of, uh, it costs actually, five to 25 times more money to acquire a new customer than it is to keep the ones that you have happy. Think about it. Happy customers mean that they're talking to their family and friends about you. So that word of mouth is still super important. And we know that the number one most common source of all new, new leads still are referrals between friends and family and colleagues. And it's really cheap marketing, guys. Keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that by looking after your customers, they're actually going to spend more with you and return to use you again. And it's this loyalty that you want to nurture and try and capture in any reviews that you have and that you can gather. So just to be very clear about how important customer reviews are, 93% of purchase decisions are made uh, are influenced, sorry, by online reviews. Just keep that in mind, guys, whenever you are, um, or at, when you're personally actively looking for something to buy and you catch yourself doing it. Some people do it and not even realize they do it. So that's why reviews are so important. And that's why I'm now going to jump into um, how you're going to do it. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm assuming that you're just going to jump in, Anna Mari, if you have a question. So I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> Um, so how do, you, yep. <laughs> how do you get more reviews and the simple word is by asking okay you've got to ask so many people they just they just don't ask um, so you can ask them in a number of ways to do it but realistically I want you guys to come away with the fact that if you don't ask for them then you're only going to be capturing about 1% to 2% of what you could be capturing. And I've just showed you in that last slide how important it is, it is to have reviews. So I just want to hammer home that all it is is asking. So there are many ways that you can ask for a review. So I'm just going to touch on some of these now. I'm just going to talk about them. Um, but the one that I'm really going to concentrate on at the end is emails, because I think that's more the most attainable in the digital age um, to most businesses today. But first, you can ask them verbally if they would like to give you a review. And you can tell them where to go and where to put their review online. So I want to give you guys another example of a really good experience I had, but how verbally asking for reviews may have fallen down a little bit. So I was on a boat trip over the summer who did this method of verbally asking. And it was a beautiful boat trip, had a great day. And at the end of the trip, they said, don't forget to review us online. They gave us a really good spiel about either use TripAdvisor, Google, we'd really appreciate it. If you mention one of our guys, they get a box of beer. Um, yeah, jump online and review us. Was, we had a great time. And I remember thinking at the time when they gave us the spiel, oh yeah, I've got to jump on and give them a review. It's been great. Did I review them? Did I do it? Um, I'm really sad to say, but I kind of feel a bit guilty, but I didn't. And not because I didn't enjoy the trip and not because I had any issues with it, but because I just forgot about it and I got busy. And I then had to, it, it would have taken a bit of brain power to actually remember um, the exact name of their trip, find it and go where I needed to go to put the review. So I'm not saying that this method of asking for reviews doesn't work, but I'm just letting you guys know, don't expect a massive jump on the number of your reviews if you decide that asking verbally is the way that you want to get more reviews. Totally mention it, 
but you may want to mention it in a context of a bigger plan on how to get reviews. So another method that we know and that we have seen businesses use is a business card or mail out. So people use um, a business card with a review site written on it, or they'll package it up and put it with their products if they send it with a little message sort of saying, oh, can you review us here? Some businesses um, will send this out via a mail as well. And it will be a really nice message. And again, this is being super proactive and it's a great initiative, guys. But I want you to consider a number of things that we've just talked about. How people are behaving these days and is a business card or via I like, I like to call it snail mail, but I don't want to offend anyone, but mail, the best way to communicate with your customers and you will know your customers the best. But often people will get a business card and stick it in their back pocket or in their handbag and forget about it. Or you'll open a, a, a letter in the mail and you'll read it, you'll put it down and it will just get um, I, in my house it gets lots of paper being put on top of it and then it just gets forgotten about again it's not top of mind and it's not sitting there and it's not easy to do so verbally and business card and mail they're really really nice ways to do it and they are being proactive I'm not saying don't do it but you need to realize that you need to know your customers and know which one works for your customers and customer behavior so there's just a little few little things there that you need to be aware of. And don't expect your huge results from your reviews, but you will get some extra ones, which is always awesome. Um, some businesses that we know of send an SMS to customers asking for them to review them. Now, um, a link to the review site should always be sent in this SMS. Uh, some some businesses that do this take a, it takes up a lot of their time because they they actually sit and text the person themselves. Make sure that you do not do this because it's going to take up so much of your time. Try and find a system that automates this for you. Um, I will highly recommend that. The downfall of this one that we've talked to, we've talked to multiple businesses that use it is the cost involved in sending an SMS, but the response rates are really, really good. Um, so you can expect a response rate of up to 20 to 30% of the people following through to review you if, if that's what you are looking for. But it's just the cost versus the time and effort, um, uh, cost and time and effort involved in doing this, this um, way of doing the reviews. So that's why I wanted to really concentrate on emails today because in some ways, there's lots of ways out there that you can automate them, but also you can, they're just e easily accessible for businesses. So the majority of customers that we work with and that we know um, multiple businesses that we work with have favored emails. Um, they are a great way to, but, oh no, so what I need you guys to remember actually before I get into emails is what you need to have from your customers to do these emails. So, and it's the same with SMSs. You actually have to have gathered their phone numbers or their emails to be able to use these systems. And I suppose that's where the verbal or the mail or the business card may come in handy if you haven't gathered that information. But maybe look at your processes and see, well, how can I gather that information to make sure that I do have this important data so that I can actually reach out and contact them? Um, the other thing I would do, make sure you do, is that um, if you are gathering their email addresses, that you are only using them for transactional purposes if you haven't got permission to use them for marketing purposes, because there is the privacy laws around those um, that way and I'm not going to get into that today because that's a whole different that could be a whole webinar on its own but um, just make sure that if you're planning to use it for marketing that you need permission the transactional side of things is okay um, so I wanted to give you guys an example of an email um, this is one that the yonder system sends out requesting a review 
Now, the Yonder requests um, actually start with an MPS question. Now, I just want to um, touch on MPS question quickly, just in case there's people here that don't know it, and I'm using um, slang that people don't know. So MPS is net promoter score, and it actually is a measurement of how likely someone is to refer you to a friend or family or colleague. So you can see that little question, yeah, how likely is it that you recommend us to friend and families, family and friends, or it could be friends and colleagues. Um, this, uh, we use this, um, as a way to filter who is asked for a request online and who isn't asked to uh, a review, sorry, online and who isn't asked for a review. So those that rate a business nine or 10 out of 10 are asked to review them externally, but ones that aren't are actually just said, thanks for your feedback and are not asked to review you. So this is just a certain way, but um, what I want to pick up from that, and, and this is just how Yonder does it, um, to make it really simple for businesses to capture bad ne negative reviews before they ex actually get put externally onto a website, uh, onto a review site. Um, but you don't have to do it this way. But what I wanted to show you is a number of things to do with the email and discuss some do's and don'ts around it that I'm going to bring up in a minute. But the things I want you guys to know is the personalized feel of the email that they get. So this is the email that they open up, the one on the left hand side. It's actually got your business logo, the business logo on it, and it's been personalized to the person that it is to. So don't just send out a generic, hey, we'd love for you to review us online, follow this link or review us here. Make sure that you've at least included their first name. You've got some sort of idea, they've got some sort of idea of where this emails come from. And, and it just is a lot more nicer. So we've got a 35 to 40% completion rate of these surveys. And that is, that's extremely high in regards to the industries in general. Um, and it just has to be personalized and nice, guys. Um, and the other thing that I want you guys to pick up is how simple and easy it is. So in here, there are just buttons that people push. That's it. They type there if they want to. And then they push the button if they want to review on Google, or Facebook, or TripAdvisor. Simple. You need to keep it simple. Buttons are a really, really good way. They like, People like buttons. Um, we've seen a couple of emails that go out that are really lovely and they say review us here and it's just the here is highlighted um, with a link to a um, review site. Great. If you could make that into a button, even better. People just like simple and easy calls to action. Okay. I can't stress this en enough in this. Um, other things you need to consider when you send an email out. Is it the same day that you send it out? Is it one day later? Two days later? A week later? Timing matters. Okay. Um, what I would suggest that any business does and anyone that uses ours, we suggest they do as well, is that they actually do some testing and check what is your best response rate to get people to review you? It may not be the same day that they get it. Although if it's a haircut, for example, I always love my hair after I've left the hairdressers and it's looking really good. So it might pay to ask me then before I go and wash it and mess it all up. <laughs> but in terms of um, lawyers, for example, often there's a little bit of paperwork or follow-up that needs to be done and it's best to come a few weeks later or a week later. So it, it changes. You'll know your customers the best. Don't be scared to practice and, and get it right. So we know for tourism, for example, um, that some businesses do really well three days after a trip. Um, other businesses do well the day after. So it really varies across the board. Um, so we know the hair salon, for example, that we know, they actually send out review requests to customers and they only send it out and they and they send it out, I actually aren't 100% sure when they've, what they've landed on yet because they've been testing it and trialing it. So, and so salons will change. But what they have also done is remember that you 
do not send one multiple times. So if you have repeat customers, um, and the hairdressers is a, is a really good example that every six weeks you might have the same customer and don't ask them every six weeks to review you. Um, make sure that you have it set up so that they only get asked maybe every six months or every 12 months even. The hairdresser, a couple of hairdressers that we work with, I know definitely have it set up so it's every 12 months they ask for a review from person. Yep. We've got a couple of questions. So yep. one is from Charlie. Hello, oh. Charlie. Um, so the question is, hey, I'm using Shopify and the stamped.io app yep. for use. So I'm not yep. familiar with that app, but maybe yep. you are. I am. Yep. Um, they don't have the SMS option. Is there a text review app you recommend or what link you would add um, into the SMS? So the link into the SMS should be the review site link. You need okay. to add the review site link into any SMS you send. Um, I do not know off the top of my head. I'd have to go back and look at my notes to see yeah. Um, at yeah, SMS specific review sites. But if she's using Stamp.io, that's really, it's a really good one for Shopify. Like I, I would, if she's using that, as long as it's being automated for her, yeah, or he. I don't know. He, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, that's okay. Um, so yeah, so it's, I guess it, it's saying they don't have the the text review uh, um, functionality, and they don't have the SMS option. Yep. I would look into Shopify because they have so many integrations. Perhaps go back to their integrations or their apps page and type in like SMS reviews or even contact Shopify. If you need help with that, contact support at digitalboost.co.nz and we'll refer you to our guy who is a Shopify expert and he could help you with that, probably yeah. streamline that process. Another yeah. question is, is there a charge to use Yonder? Um, I will pop their link to their site uh, in the chat so that you can have a look at all those options, but I'm sure that there probably is. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yep. Yeah. We've got a bunch of packages depending on how many reviews people yep. need to send out. So it's all based on usage. Yeah. So I will pop that link in there. Another yep. question. Sorry, we got heat. Hey, right. oh, thanks, right. thanks, Charlie Fima. Okay. So you never know with somebody's name, and I'm really conscious of gender fluidity these days. So I'm yeah, like, no, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so thank you. Thanks for with the smile of it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, and then right now I put a Google form for them to give us feedback. Yep. Do you have any other methods which are affordable and easy to use? Uh, other than Yonder? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, SurveyMonkey is another one that people use a lot of. That's probably the easiest. Um, SurveyMonkey would be the cheapest, easiest sort of version that people use at the moment um, Google uh, on top of Google Forms. Make sure that any of those versions, though, again, is just being automated for you, which mm -hmm. they should be able to do. Yeah, you don't want to be adding more work, do you? I no, mean, like, no, and that's, what, I'm all of, that's what we're all about is making sure that it's simple to use and that it actually reduces the workload of business, not... So, um, for example, um, the hairdressers that we work with at the moment, they've actually integrated with Timely so that all their surveys are automatically oh, sent right. out. So they don't need to go yep. in and manually do it because it takes a long time for you guys. Like, I'm talking about emails here, but I'm, I'm not picturing that you guys have to sit down and manually enter in everyone's email address and send off an email. What you <laughs> need to be doing and what it was probably a whole different... Um, webinar in itself is like using crm systems and how to use crm systems to we've the got product. that we've yeah, got cool. so many awesome. of those don't worry leticia we've yes. got so many crm systems and in fact salesforce is going to be coming on and talking about how to use crms in general and we've yep. had lots of sessions on crms so if you're looking for that data contact support at digitalboost.co .co.nz or we have a search function now on the site so you can actually go on to digital boost and type in crm and you will get all of the video content whether it's bite size or q a on crm so check it out yep no that's perfect so i would be yeah definitely using something like that with google form like the lady that's just asked or man that's just asked about google forms yeah. um yeah, that, that should be within a CRM system that they just put in the link in 
to yeah. uh, email that's been built within the CRM system to then trigger it automatically. Same yeah. with SurveyMonkey. Yeah, Yonder links with a bunch of CRMs as well because we know that that's where the customer data sits and you need to have some sort of, like to automate this whole process, it's really good to have a trigger. So if someone gives you their, their email or their phone number, how do you then trigger that survey to go out or re review request to go out at the right time? Which is, which is what I was saying, right? The timing is everything. It is, isn't it? Like, it, that yeah. was such a valid point. Like, you know, once you leave the hairdresser, you're like, yep. I'm yeah, giving the I love my hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 All right, I'm jumping off. I'll let you continue. Uh, yeah. That's questions from here so far. No, that's cool. So um, another, just touching on those those forms, like the Survey Monkey Google Forms or Yonder that you can build surveys and reviews into. Um, the key point to all of them is to keep it short and sweet. So if you are hoping to get feedback as well as reviews, which Yonder system does as well and others do, um, you need to be thinking how many questions is okay to ask before I ask them a review online? Because we've found that any more than five questions, people will not review you to the external site because they've already answered those feedback. I mean, there's a very small amount that do. Whereas if you keep it really short and sweet, then you capture a lot more of those reviews going through to external. Again, it depends where you're up to if you want to capture internal reviews. But at the moment, I've been talking mostly in this webinar about external reviews and how you can boost those external ones um, at this stage. So that's, yeah, that's just really important. To remember, um, I've covered the personalized one when I showed you those emails. Again, you can do it like Yonder's not the only system that you can personalize them in. Um, I know that Stamped.io for Shopify integrations is really cool to do use it with. Um, but again, it's not, it's only been built for Shopify ones. So you just need to find the right system for your for your business. Um, I'm just gonna, I just wanted to add, sorry, um, Leticia. Um, Julian from Shopify is actually going to be on tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> for a so oh, no, that's a perfect. question, do yeah. you, know, you can ask Julian yourself. In fact, that whole session is really geared towards answering your questions. So cool. Bring yeah, no, definitely. And they'll know the, the right ones for the Shopify um, things. We are more specialized in the services side of like professional services, tourism, that sort of side of things. But they're all relevant in terms of how you actually ask. So don't, don't stress about that. It's all relevant. Um, I'm going to touch on a few, though, a few don'ts. Um, and one of them that, we, and that we've seen quite a bit is sending marketing material with a review request. Um, don't do it. Um, first of all, only do it if you've got permission to market to that email or however you're marketing to them. Um, and B, it doesn't get the results that you can get if you just ask for the review alone. Um, we It may be a bit of just too many calls to action at once. So you've been, they've been distracted by something um, and just forgotten to do your review or they've read the first part of it. I thought, oh yeah, this is a marketing email and then not read your review request at the end. So we would not recommend doing this and you send them as two different emails. Um, the other one is don't nag for reviews. So um, if you have sent one follow-up reminder asking them for a review and they haven't reviewed you yet, um, just leave them alone and maybe try again later. So um, we've got some American customers that, and, and American uh, 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 um, behavior might be slightly different. They ask a couple of times, but then they even stop asking. Um, and it's just really important that you yeah, don't keep asking them. And it's a game for those repeat customers that you don't keep asking them because they will actually get annoyed with you. Make sure that if it's repeat customers, that it's picking that up, that the system, whatever you're using, is picking it up and not sending them those um, review requests. Um, and I have touched on it before with uh, making it simple and short and sweet. <laughs> but don't send additional too many question, additional questions when asking for a review. So if you um, yeah ask too many questions, they just don't go through and review you, and that's what you want. Um, you want more reviews. 
And it's, yeah, it's just a simple way to do it. I would also say, and I think we touched on it with some of those questions before, is that make sure that the link you send them is the correct link. Um, so maybe I should go back to the do page, but the do would be check your links are working correctly and make sure that they're sending them to the correct page to review you on. And another thing you can think of is that if you've got, you're doing really, really well on one review site, be it um, Facebook recommendations or TripAdvisor, but your Google reviews aren't so good, then switch it out and change so that you're actually um, getting reviews on multiple sites and not just one. Saying that, um, in the Yonder sort of process, when people get asked for a review, 75% of them choose to actually review on Google over Facebook, TripAdvisor, or any other review site. So Google is definitely the most popular site that people like to review on. But if you are trying to build up your review um, portfolio over multiple sites, then don't be afraid to actually change which link you send out for people to follow and review you on. Um, that's just a little tip that we pick up all the time. Um, so now I wanted to touch on how you can use your reviews. If you've got any questions around um, how to get them more, don't be afraid to ask them. But um, I wanted to go into how you use your reviews to actually help your business to grow. So it's all fine and dandy. You have a bunch of Google My Business or TripAdvisor or um, Rate My Agent reviews. But what are you actually going to do with them to help drive your marketing and sales and business success? So, um, yeah, it, it, and it's the same with products if you're selling products as well. If you've got all these reviews about your products, what do you actually do with them and how do you use them to grow your business? Otherwise, you've put in a lot of effort and um, they may not be used um, to the most of it, full of their ability, full ability. So, the first one I want to suggest suggestion is to use social proof that you've gathered online on your own website. So if you are driving and spending money driving people to your website, your website has to convert. Otherwise, it's a little bit of wasted money for marketing driving people to your website. And um, if you want to convert people on your website, social proof, again, as I've said before, and why reviews are so important, are super important. But there's a few things that you need to be aware of when you use social proof on your website. So this is a hairdressing website. They've got their, a couple of their reviews coming up here. You can just scroll through and, and read a bunch of them. So um, you can do this in a couple of ways. Get your reviews onto your website. Um, widget, plug-in widgets um, allow you to add reviews into your website. Um, but keep in mind these couple of things. Make sure that they're pulling up the most relevant or newest reviews. So if your reviews are too old, that it doesn't actually it actually doesn't look that good, and it's not going to help your conversion rates. So we would um, an example would be I was on a website recently. To be fair, it was a tourism one, so they haven't been open for a little bit. But they that they had been open in the last six months before lockdown in Auckland happened recently, and they just didn't have any latest reviews on since 2019, which then made me think, well, they haven't been open at all, and they're not that. What are they doing? But in actual fact, they had been. They just hadn't got the most recent reviews online. So it makes a big difference. Also, what you should be showing is the date of the of the review. So the date and the person that gave it, if possible and the source, so where it came from. So these are this is an example of Beyond the Widget that's sitting on our website and pulling through the feedback and the reviews that have come through directly to the business, but it will also pull through Google reviews. So um, another example, and, uh, and Yonder does it, but there's other, other sites that do it as well, where your widget will pull through multiple reviews from multiple different review sites so that when you're on someone's web and you're showing your website to customers, you can say, oh, well, Google, these are some Google reviews. These are some of the direct feedback we get. This is some of the TripAdvisor feedback we get. This is some of the Facebook feedback that we get or reviews that we get. So it's really important that it's up to date. You can see who's done it and that they can see what the rating is as well. So the star ratings there. Um, so that's one way to use it on your website. 
Um, now, where you put it on your website, a little bit depends on the customer journey that you have got on your website. So think about your customer journey and think about, okay, where about does, does the review need to sit to convert people to book? Some people, it's at the top of the website, right at the start. And then others, it's actually sitting a little bit at the bottom. And so they, it, it just depends on what kind of website you want. Um, for law, we've got a law firm at the moment that, I, oh, actually, I can't remember where they've got it on their website, but they're using it on their website to actually show the, the, the customer experience that they're giving to people. So it's a little bit, yeah, they, you can use it for lots of different reasons on your website. Um, it would be really cool. And um, one thing that we do really well um, at Yonder, and I know other systems, um, or maybe they do, maybe they don't. Um, they can show what product this this um, this reviews for as well. So, and I know in tourism we're the only ones that do it. Is that we actually link to booking systems, and we so we can pull up the relevant review for that product as well. So it's no good um, if you are if you are um, showing a review and it's not actually relevant to that page. Think again as well. And if you have a review site that you have to manually enter your reviews on, make sure it's up to date. Um, whoops. Another way you can use um, your reviews is by including them in your search engine optimization strategy. So make sure you interact and reply to any reviews that come through to show people that you're, they're viewing your reviews, that you're a responsive business. There are platforms, including Yonder, that help you to manage all your reviews in one place, especially if you're going to start asking for more, which hopefully we've convinced you you should be. Um, but you, you need to be replying to them and actually using them. Um, people, um, yeah, people shop around and actually do take note of how they or how businesses are responding to reviews, both the good and the bad. Um, so that's a really good one to remember and keep in mind. Um, the, we have got some articles on our website, and I'm sure Anna Murray will show out, share our website, but there's a really good article recently. Um, oh, actually, I'm going to touch on it soon, so I'll, I'll leave that story for a minute. Um, other places that we know businesses have really good success sharing their reviews is via customer emails. So send them out. Um, yeah, if you're sending out emails, Put a little review down the bottom. Hey, this is our latest review. Kiwis tend to be very shy about singing your own praises, um, but you should and you must do it. It's, it. it's why people shop with you and you should celebrate the successes and what people think of you. Um, again, it's using social proof. We've had, um, yeah, we've had lots of people and a couple of businesses that are using them in their newsletters. So um, you have like a general section every month or however often you send out newsletters and it could be via email that you add your reviews in there um, even if you can get a little if someone's given you a review you could actually touch like contact them and say hey do you mind if i use it in the newsletter and include a photo of you just to give it a bit more of a personal touch social posts so we've seen i came across one very recently a beautician actually shared a review online through through facebook just an ad um, and it was really powerful and it actually was true honest raw and it got me thinking hey yeah i need to do it if you're selling beautician or cosmetics or products show show customer reviews on your social media so use it for um and then i'm going to say here use it for advertisements so if you're not doing a digital advertisements, but also if you're printing off advertisements, um, don't be shy to sing your praises and use them in multiple spots. Um, and the other way that um, we can do it is lots of businesses miss this opportunity actually, but I really wanted to highlight the importance of your reviews to identify business improvements. So these improvements might involve something around the service you provide, but they can also highlight where you may need staff training or even what staff are doing exceptionally well and rewarding them for it. A bit like the um, tourism one when I mentioned before where they actually pick up if staff have been mentioned and give them a box beer or a present um, if they've been mentioned in a, in a review. Um, we have one business who tracks their team's performance and use it to incentivize and reward their staff, not but not with boxes of beer, but with other staff. 
Um, and a professional service we work with who use customer feedback to help with their staff reviews. So they actually gather information on all their staff. Um, they use the Yonder system to gather these reviews and analyze it so it pulls out all the keywords and it actually picks out if a staff member's mentioned and then it puts it into a staff member profile um, so they can actually start seeing which staff and people are actually doing really well and providing the service that they expected it. So, because um, often staff, you guys will be so surprised how often staff are mentioned in reviews. So um, use it to improve your team and, and pull out those superstars and find out what they're doing and, and use them to build a really, really solid team. So um, I just wanted to tell you, and this is a story I just alluded on, is, um, and this article is full on our website, but um, this is a story about Daniel here from King Queens, who is an award-winning hotel in um, New Plymouth, beautiful place. Um, and he actually goes into how he sees negative feedback as positive by using it to make business improvements um, and changes when needed. Um, he, he recognizes he can't make everyone happy and there's always going to be negative reviews, but it's a really thought provoking um, article around how um, don't be scared of those negative bits and to use it in a positive light. Um, so often businesses hesitate to do reviews because they don't want to generate those bad ones as well. Find a system like our, or our system captures those bad reviews before they go um, externally. But even just say, hey, if, if, you, if you need some feedback, get the feedback first and then ask people for reviews. So there's different ways that you can do it to capture the good and bad. But don't be shy of it because it's all learning. Um, and I checking my time yeah i'm good um so just just to conclude and then i can answer you guys questions because i think oh, okay. I'll wait. <laughs> yep. no no i'll i'll, I'll just conclude because it's just a quick bit is that just okay. use it it's valuable for your marketing and sales and business improvement there's a real crossover with marketing and sales you convince people with sales with with social proof but you also can use it in your marketing it's easy to collect with the right technology make sure it's automated as much as possible to save your staff time and yeah, remember those do's and don'ts. Go back and have a look. <laughs> yeah. Go throw me some questions. Fantastic. So um, a question here. I'm still confused how to find a review link if your reviews are automated. Um, so I guess, yeah. So I guess the link is included in the automation. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. So when you, if you send an email asking for someone to review you, you will send them a link that will be your Google review site link. Now, if you go into Google review, into your Google My Business. Um, and you better have one. You better yeah, have I, Google My Business. I, and I bet you guys already have a webinar on Google My Business available for them. <laughs> We've got at least a couple. Yeah. yeah sure. So and watch one of those businesses. It will show you where your Google review link is. You copy that and that's the one that you put into your email, which is then automated to send out to people. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Um, yep. And we did have a couple. We did have a couple of people asking about Mailchimp and stuff like that. And so I've kind of referred those folks to Glenn at Spike.co.nz. Oh. He's our Mailchimp power partner. Excellent. So, um, well, he's not our partner. He's Mailchimp's power partner. Yep. <laughs> and yeah, so Mail Mailchimp sort of works like a CRM, is that you can just automate a bunch of emails to go out requesting. And, and again, it's that same link that needs to go into those emails that you would put into any that you do on um, MailChimp. So a question here, what about requesting reviews through social media, including a link to Google reviews? Requesting it through social media. So you can't, there's nothing stopping you. As far as I know, it's just how you automate that system because at the <laughs> moment you would have to. I've just had a thought, Leticia. Yeah. Um, a great way to do that is through um, Messenger. If you're using Facebook Messenger, yep. um, that's a great tool to ask for a review. Um, and we have the guy from EasyBots, who's our Messenger mania guy. Well, he's not Messenger mania, but you know what I mean? He um, is coming on and doing a session ha, 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 on Wednesday. So yeah. tomorrow is Shopify. And then on Wednesday, we're going to be talking about the best kept secrets of messenger marketing. If you want to know how to use that as a tool to do reviews, he would be your expert on that, I would say. I would say just be careful of when you do that, make sure that your timing is correct. Because if you're just, how do you then track your timing to know when to send the review request out? Mm. So and 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 we've we're looking into WhatsApp at the moment and doing some research into that, 
um, and looking at doing that in the future as well. There's a few technicalities around what WhatsApp allows you to push out to people. Mm, so, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say each platform, you know, would be different. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yep. this follow up question from Charlie is that she doesn't she doesn't have a Google My Business account. I bet you haven't. You definitely yes, have to get on those emails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Business. Look, even if you're an online shop, you should have a Google yep. My Business account. We've had yep. Google on talking about Google My Business. We've had Tomahawk talking about tourism. We've had yep. Dimple Digital talking about Hospo. Um, look, if you don't have a Google My Business account, you need one. First off, I'm just going to say here that it's a great way for people to verify that your business is legit because in order to get a Google My Business account, they you have to go through a screening process where they verify that your site is authentic. It has to match. And so um, I know that I've been the victim of buying something on um, Insta where I thought I was ordering something else. And then when it arrived, it looked totally different. Have you ever seen those memes? Yeah, I've experienced that. It was hilarious. Um, and it took me months to get it sorted out. And what I realized was when I actually went and checked Google for their site, it wasn't verified. And yep. that is the way that you can know that when you're online shopping and stuff, this business is real. Oh, but any business these days. And like we see it, everyone, you, like I, I think I mentioned it before, 75% of people choose to review on Google. So if you don't have Google My Business, you're missing out on Yeah. So and you can many. collect all that data through Google yeah. Analytics as well. Yeah which is free. So oh, it's like exactly. you get a double whammy, you know, yep. of things that you're getting from there. So mm. and if you've got a bed and breakfast or a tourism business with a cafe, you can have multiple Google My Businesses for yep. your one business. So yes. you can have chats with people, you know, you're yep. like- yeah, yeah, so we've, we've had to build into our software the ability for businesses to do multiple locations because yeah. they have different Google accounts that they need to send people to depending yeah. on what experience they've done and because they've all got different Google accounts. And yeah, yeah. And, and you need to you need to the reviews to go to the right place. So that's why mm -hmm. I think I, I reiterated, check your links to make sure that they're actually yeah. going to the right place. And not only, I'm glad that you're going to um, get this Google My Business going because I see that you're going to do that now. Um, so uh, not only can you do it for multiple locations, but the thing is, is that a restaurant allows you different features on Google My Business than say like a, uh, like a, a, uh, and my mind just went blank. Um, if you, if you've got a restaurant on Google, my business versus like a hotel or versus like a tourism business, some of them allow you to have chat features and some of them don't. So mm -hmm. if you it, like, that's why you want to have multiple because it allows you to engage with your audience in a lot of different ways. And the more ways that you're making yourself available to engage with your audience, like for reviews, um, yeah. this is going to be important. And so, yeah. So I'm glad that we've convinced you. <laughs> You've driven that home. So I'm just going to pop because we've got one more minute. I just want to make sure I haven't left anybody here in the dark. Um, yep. We're good on Facebook, I think. Yep. And just check YouTube. <laughs> yep. And we tried to, this is all supposed to come together in one place, but for some reason. I was reason, about to say, you need some technology there to pull it all uh, together. It does work <laughs> through Restream. Like we use Restream and Restream does okay. allow that international global chat feature, but only oh. if you push out through Restream Live Studio. Uh, okay. So, um, but we like, did, we didn't want people to have to leave Zoom. And yep. so um, unfortunately it doesn't allow me to do that feature. <laughs> sad face, sad face emoji. Um, yeah, so Letitia, this has been amazing. What a great session, guys. I'm so excited that you got to have this. We've got a jam-packed week this week. Mm. Um, do tune in every day. Book us in with your morning tea. I have already popped the Yonder website in the chat and it's on all of the other platforms as well so you have that there if you'd like to link in with them um, oh, and yeah if anyone's got any questions just reach out I'm really like I'm happy to answer any questions that people have oh thank you so much yeah thank you for getting thank yous coming in have a fabulous day everybody um kakite look those of you in tamaki makara kia kaha aroha nui okay stay strong much love to you and um, everyone else, you know, well, all of us stay safe and we'll see you tomorrow. It's been our pleasure. Have a wonderful day.